guys, I'm Shrek Imagine today, Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. I'm glad to have you here today. We're going to go ahead and talk about Theodore the Savant, the speed running guru of Raid Shadow Legends, but he's much more than that. Such a versatile champion, truly one of the better champions out there in the game. This is a long overdue guide because we've never done a guide even on the main channel on this dude. Sean Tang says, can't find your videos on how to make Nuker's tank supports. I think if you just YouTube search, how to build a nuker tank or support champion, uh, Ash, I think it would probably come up. Along those lines, can you give a guide on Theodore? Yes, we can. Uh, uh, Theodore on Modern Myths, a lot of you guys getting him during the two-time sacred event. I think that was probably like a couple weeks ago, if I remember right. RRB says uh, quad spiral. Uh, four quad spiral items? But three in the destroy set. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we can definitely do a Theodore. Cliff says Theodore. Absolutely. Hey, I'm glad that you found me too, Cliff. You know what, guys? A ton more, a lot more requests. Uh, just giving some love to a few of you guys. Alex uh, Wilson, much love. TGGP, we get none you. Uh, yeah, uh, you make, we'll make it happen. Miles, what's up, man? Uh, we'll make a Pythion guide happen soon, too. So, Theodore, I actually have two uh, builds for you guys today. I actually have two Theodores. Instead of empowering him, I built two because I figured he's the king of speedruns anyway. Having two poison combustors can never be a bad thing. So, he's one of those champions that instead of empowering, I would actually build two if you're lucky enough to not have just one but two of these dude. Uh, let me push myself over a little bit. I'm feeling like I'm falling off the screen over here. All right, so why is he so good? What does he do? Let's take a quick look at him. Knight's Revenant. He is a legendary champion in front of my face. Theodore the Savant. We have champion lore in this champion too. And check this out, guys. The champion lore is right there in game now. I don't have to go pull up the website and stuff. Uh, support champion, decreased speed. We'll read the lore at the end of the video. Uh, decreased speed on the A1. A uh, Two poisons and poison sensitivity on everybody with an increased speed on all allies on a three-turn cooldown. What an insanely good ability, right? Two poisons and poison sensitivity, AoE, three turn, increased speed, everybody. And again, AoE on the A1 as well, with a whopping 50% chance on the decreased speed. Defense-based champion as well, guys. Uh, chemistry, chemistry on the A3. Three turn cooldown again when booked. The books go right to the cooldowns. We love it. We love it. Increase the duration of all poison debuffs and HP burn debuffs on all enemies by one turn that instantly activates any HP burn and poison debuffs on each enemy. We love the extension uh, as well as obviously the activation there. Uh, place a weaken on, for, for two turns on enemies not under poison to HP burns. That way it's going to bring some utility to your team even if you know, you don't have the burns or the H or the poisons up at that particular time, or if for whatever reason you're running him on a team with no poisons or burns, uh, which, you know, or maybe he's the only poison or, or on the entire team with his A2, right? Uh, maybe you just get, you know, so it doesn't really jive with the uh, the cooldowns there, or maybe the enemies cleanse or whatever. Well, then you're going to have at least that weaken on the A3. And then on his passive, this champion's resistance is increased by five for each poison debuff on the enemy team. I can really stack up. It's a nice little extra bonus into an already insanely good kit. We have accuracy in all battles by 50 on the aura as well. There he is, man. He looks cool too. He's got like the green smoke emanating from his body or I guess his, his torso and his in the back of his head, I guess a little bit. Uh, very, very cool looking. Knight's Revenant. I've said this before on the channel, but I think that Knight's Revenant are some of the coolest, uh, both in terms of lore and in terms of just being a death cult. I don't know, maybe I'm a, a sick, twisted individual, but I really like it. I really like they have that in the game. His base speed is really good at 105. He's got a lot of HP at 20.8. And then we have the 12.11 on the defense. So this guy is an absolute monster all around. You name it, he's really got it all. Uh, you guys see that? Oh, wait, this is bothering me, that what that red check mark or whatever. I just pulled Croydy in the blue. Do you guys want to see a guide on him? I'm thinking about taking this one to the main channel on my guide. Very cool triple hitter on the A1, freeze double hitter on the A2. Very, very cool champion. I think I'm probably gonna do it, gonna do it on the main channel, but maybe I'll upload it here too. I don't I don't know. That's the tricky thing. When there's a new champion, sorry for the quick digression, the, when there's a new champion that comes into the game, right? Uh and they're good. <laughs> I'm tempted to bring them on the main channel, but then what am I supposed to do? Re-upload the exact same video to this channel? Re-record and say the same stuff, but do different dungeons? Maybe that's the way to go. Anyway, guys, back to Theodore the Savant. Uh, as I mentioned, I have two builds, 
And I wanted to share, I'm actually really happy that I had two builds on this champion because now I get to share two different ways that you can build this champion depending on where you're going to be using him the most, right? And the good news is, is really you can get by with both of these builds in most areas, especially the regeneration. So regen and immortal, regen and perception, you can kind of choose that other set to go along with it. I think that immortal and regen are probably the most popular combination is an amazing set for Theodore the Savant. That's because you can get like maybe a seer activation team or a poison activation team in dungeons you can lean on the seers of the world or whoever to get you through the waves teodor is obviously going to help in that regard too but when you get to the boss kind of like a bad alcazar type champion right he has the capabilities to just solo all on his own so oftentimes the rest of your team will die and maybe it's just Theodore by himself. Maybe it's one or two champions alive. But because he's defense based and you can build him nice and tanky in a regen set, he can just solo the boss, you know? And that's what makes him so uh, efficient, meaning that we're going to get 100% win rate on these speed runs, right? And when he goes solo, uh, like mono e mono with the boss too, it actually speeds up the run quite a bit because he does so much damage, more so than probably the other champions on your team. So we have him built as fast as we could with the regen gear and as much HP as we could stack on. 70k HP, I think that's totally totally fine. I do have some resistance built in as well. We do want to be resisting as much as we can, especially against the Ice Golem. For that reason, a lot of people go with a tier 6 mastery of Unshakable on this particular build. However, me personally, I've seen greater success with Oppressor. Uh, again, this is just, you know, whatever, whatever makes sense for you guys. Go with what makes sense for you. But I like Oppressor. Increased term year fill rate by 2.5%. For each active debuff cast by this champion. And he casts the two poisons and the poison sensitivity. So there's a lot of debuffs out there and the decreased speed on the A1 as well, right? So I like a presser on this champion. The 10% turn meter fill rate is actually really powerful. So that's one way to go. Or you could just go with the unshakable, the traditional route, I would say, and get that 50 resistance. We love retribution on this champion and we love deterrence. Uh, the chance of counterattacking with that nice AoE on the A1, thus landing the decreased speed is is it's great right in the early game if you pull it to your theodore the savant i'm not showing you this build today but you can also consider running him in a stun set and for that case you might want to come down and pick up fearsome presence he does have that aoe on the a1 so a nice control champion while doing damage at the same time right can definitely we, we always focus on on champions like this like end game champions really good in the end game on the end game for obvious reason however it needs to be mentioned that he is really good if you pull him early on in the account as well like really good he's gonna supercharge your account progression so congratulations if you're in that boat uh other than that guys i just went with masteries that made sense for him i will say that rapid response he's bringing obviously the increased speed in the three turn cooldown and then of course arcane celerity 30 percent chance of increasing the term here by 10 percent when a debuff cast by this champion is removed or expires Again, we just spoke about it. all those debuffs. We're going to get a bunch of turn meter fill through the Arcane Celerity and the Rapid Response on this particular build. So that's this build, guys. I'm going to show you quickly the artifacts, then I'm going to show you the other build that I like and talk about when you would use that. So this is more of a solo or dungeon build, right? Let me, let me put it this way. This is more of a Spider, Fire Knight, and Ice Golem build, in my opinion, right? Uh, the next one I'm going to show you is going to be more of a Hydra, and more of a, uh, maybe Demon Lord, and more, well, it depends on if you're speed tuned or not. Let's not talk about Demon Lord, because you never know. Uh, but for Hydra and for Fire Knight, I'll show you the, on the next one, okay? So resistance on the banner, we have HP, uh, we have defense. I don't want to totally ignore defense, guys, so I put defense ring on him as well. Looking for HP on the substats. We have HP percentage and HP percentage on the, the chest piece and the gauntlets, respectively. And we have speed on the boots, Again, we already talked about stat priorities on this champion. Let's go to build number one. You guys know me. If there's a champion, uh, if there's a champ, if, if, if there's a, a favorite set for my favorite champions, it is Relentless, man. Relentless and Reflex. I'm a, such a big fan. Uh, people don't consider Relentless enough, in my opinion. Same thing with Reflex. Both of those sets are so powerful, guys. 18% chance might not sound like much to get an extra turn, but the longer you play this game, the more you'll recognize just how much power this can have, especially in longer battles, which is why I mentioned this is fantastic for Hydra Clan boss, right? So in a Relentless set, and we have him fast again, 245. We don't have him crit capped, I don't think, in either build. Uh, his A1, I think it's a 3.1 multiplier defense base. It's decent damage, but it's not crazy damage. Most of his damage 
dramatically is going to be coming from uh, the, you know, the, the poisons that he's bringing to the table in the instant activations that he's bringing to the table. That's his big source of damage that he is adding to your team. Uh, accuracy needs to be high on either build because we want to make sure we're landing his poison. So 380 here on the accuracy is going to be very good for a Hydra Clan boss, any level that we're facing with him. And then again, I, I try to get some crit rate on him uh, with some survivability as well. He is defense-based, so we tried to build his defense a little bit higher on this build. Whereas with regeneration, this is important to say, you'll notice that I had HP percentage on the chest and the gauntlets. When you have a champion in regeneration in Immortal, even if they're a defense-based champion, champion, you really want to stack that HP to get better heals, okay? More survivability, even if they're defense base. In this case, though, we do have defense percentage on the chest. We have defense percentage on the gauntlets as well. We have speed on the boots. We have accuracy on the banner, and we have crit damage and some defense. Now, crit damage, you know, we kind of went with it because we got the double uh, accuracy roll in a little bit more HP as well because HP was a little bit low, especially considering 45k isn't bad, but considering we're starting with almost 2100, I mean, it's it, we could stack up a little bit more. So there we go, guys. I have a broken set and the other artifacts. That's totally fine. Uh, I think I mentioned but speed on the boots on this champion. Now, in terms of blessings, guys, uh, I do not have any awakening on either of my Theodore the Savants. That's a bummer. But I would go with Brimstone. I think that's the uh, probably the obvious choice for this champion. Those smites will definitely add up even more damage. You're getting more HP, survivability, and accuracy along the way, depending on what how many you know stars you have on blessing out. Awakened, blessinged out. Uh, we have Crushing Rend as an option as well, if you want to consider something a little bit outside the box. Cruelty as well. Uh, perhaps Temporal Chains. Uh, let's see, what else? Intimidating Presence, if you don't have one on the team. But me again, I would go with Brimstone, getting that extra smite damage. Uh, you know, with the AoE and the A1, plenty of chances to land as well. So that's where I would go in the Blessings if I had them. Uh, in terms of Masteries, here is the Mastery build on the second Theodore the Savant. I went down and I picked up the Accuracy this time. I did pick up Lore of Steel. I only have one Perception set, but hey, it's... No, I actually don't. Okay, so we could get rid of Laura Steel. <laughs> I would probably go with Evil Eye instead. I made a last second change on the build that I had with him. And then on the offense tree, I pretty much just came down and I hugged the left-hand side and I went with War Master. Uh, if you're looking to maximize damage from this champion, crit capping at him at 100%, going down, grabbing War Master uh, is going to be the way to go. Uh, you don't have to go with everything, obviously, but it's nice to have, uh, you know, at least one of those uh, as part of his kit, as part of his build, excuse me. So there we go, guys. Those are the two builds on Theodore the Savant. What I want to do now is jump into an area where I would use both of those builds, Ice Golem and Hydra. Be right back. All right, guys, so we're going to use the regen version of Theodore first. As you can see here, even the teams of the week, a lot of them, I mean, look at this team, dude. Three Calvalaxes, really rubbing it in, man, and two Theodores. We really see the same thing with most dungeons in terms of multiple, oftentimes, Theodores carrying the fastest and best teams in the world. My team's a little bit different. Instead of being an all-out poison explosion, we do have some elements of that with Tomb Lord with the Death Burst ability, with Kaimar and poisons on his on his A1. Theodore obviously bringing his own, but then we have uh, Seer kind of helping us out as well, taking on the main heavy lifting, if you will clearing those waves but now as i mentioned we have the regeneration version of theodore he might be in a position where he is soloing this ice golem here towards the end of things just depending on how things go you don't need a bellinor on this team it's not really even mandatory just having a decrease uh, defense champion is also going to be very good uh just to help out with those waves we have a whole video on seer like the correct way to build her if you're looking to maximize your damage so check that one out as well where i show you this build that she's in right now on this team but check out the health here guys Theodore specifically he's full so is Tomb Lord everybody's dead except for Bellinor there just hanging on to his uh, veil uh, but the two man crew here the two uh, ironically right the two spirit affinity champions versus the magic affinity boss stay alive and are going to be able to finish this fight out and that is the power you can see that we didn't even really need uh, the immortal set alongside the regeneration set just to make sure that he's topped off there and you know staying alive basically to solo the boss at the end there
You can see Theodore's damage, 1.5 million, uh, and then Tomb Lord and Seer. Of course, the damage, uh, a lot of, I guess some new players kind of commented on what do Theodore doesn't do that much damage. Uh, the poisons that are activated get attributed to the damage overall of the, the poison layer, you know? So Tomb Lords, all those poisons that he dropped, the four per hit on the A2, uh, he gets credit for that damage, even though it was Theodore who actually went in and activated them instantly and increased their duration, which does make sense when you think about it. All right, let's go ahead and keep that shield. It's crit rate with crit rate, you know? I might not keep it, but I might roll it just to see if I can get like a triple crit rate roll on that shield uh, because it is in a crit rate set. Anyway, uh, that's the team. Nice and easy. That's the same sort of strategy that I would use in, in Dragon's Lair, right? Uh, in Spider's Den, I'm not going to sit here and do a run on all of these and uh, every single one of these dungeons. But if we go to the boss guide and look at teams of the week, you can see a bunch. I mean, look at this guy, dude. Are you... Four Theodores? <laughs> You can see he is the king of speed. Four Teodors and a Mordecai. No big deal. Here we see, look at these, these two-man crews of just Sissia and Acrisia. I should make a team like that. Uh, but yeah, you can see a lot of Teodor and Savant just as a poison activator. Very, very good in Spider's Den, of course. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you, you know what? I'm going to show you a Fire Knight hard team with Teodor. Uh, so let's go Fire Knight 5. Oh, I have this team that I was kind of messing around with. Uh, can I go to the main squad here? This is the main squad that I've been using here on Fire Knight. Uh, especially, I'm looking for spirit affinity to go against here, spirit or uh, force affinity, because I have so many spirit affinity champions. Uh, I'm going this time with the other, not Tomb Lord, the other Theodore the Savant, right? This is going to be the build that is in Relentless Set, okay? And the reason I prefer this build, uh, when using in Fire Knight is because, well, we want him to, when that shield is down... We really want him to get a double turn and get to that poison activation ability even better if he can place them and then activate them vis-a-vis -vis that extra turn. So in Fire Knight, same thing with Hydra Clan Boss, I prefer the Relentless build on Theodore the Savant. However, as I said earlier, it, it bears mentioning that the uh, the more popular of the builds is definitely Regeneration and Immortal. Come back to you guys when we get to the Fire Knight here. All right, guys, approaching the Fire Knight hard on stage five here. Uh, you're going to see how effective this team is, really utilizing that counterattack. I have no speed tuning on this team. I have no uh, special AI at all using on this team. I just have it full out auto, uh, the lazy man's approach. I'm sure I could optimize this a lot better uh, than I do right now. Uh, I have some good news and bad news about the lore on this champion. The good news is, is I still have it. It's in game and I'm going to read it to you guys. The bad news is, but it's kind of good news, is it's not on the official Raid Shadow Legends lore website. So I would not have been able to do it with you guys uh, previously. And what I wanted to do was read the lore to you while he was doing Hydra Clan Boss in the background. So what I'm going to do is instead of doing an entire Hydra Clan Boss battle, I'm just going to show you the team that I kind of use him on. I'm going to take a look at uh, maybe a few of my clan mates teams if they're using him. It is at the beginning of a rotation though. Uh, but I'll just talk a little bit about it. I'll talk about the build that I use and then we'll go right into the lore. So we have that shield down, right? going to come in here with the ally attack. This is where Acrisia starts dealing the heavy damage. But you will notice we have decrease uh, speed. I'm not sure. It looks like Tomb Lord put that on because Tomb Lord and uh, Theodore both have that. But there it goes. Unfortunately, we did not get the extra turn there, but we did get a ton of damage, right? So when that Relentless procs in this situation... It can really be the difference between a whole nother cycle of that shield coming down, which is why I like using the Hydra Clan Boss Relentless build for the Fire Knight specifically, right? Getting those extra turns is really, really valuable. Now, you could use a Relentless set in Dragon or Ice Golem as long as you can keep them alive, okay? It's way more difficult as you get to harder stages, later stages, uh, without running Regen in Immortal uh, to keep him alive. But if you can, sure, run him in Relentless, you know? Uh, and if you can, build them with a little bit of crit rate. Build, crit cap them at 100%. Put some crit damage on them. Uh, try to get away with as much damage as you can while making sure that he's always staying alive. And that is generally the case with most champions. So there we go, guys. Theodore did a great job putting out a 1.1 million total damage. Again, Tomb Lord put out a lot too, but those are the poisons that were instantly activated by Theodore. Uh, and Acrisia really just doing what she does best, being the best PvE champion in the game. A great damage dealer against any boss in the game. So guys, this 
is the Hydra Clan Boss team that I used Theodore with. Uh, really love this team. I'm actually doing a video on this team on one particular champion's build, which is very unorthodox. It's going to go live on my main channel in about maybe two days, maybe three days. So go ahead and check that out if you guys are interested. Uh, but I love it. We have Inquisitor there. Uh, we have Theodore in the lead. Why don't we have Duchess in the lead? Because Inquisitor, of course, he has that turn meter boost, which is going to go to the champion in the lead position. And we want Theodore going as much as humanly possible. So now he's going to be getting the turn meter boost from his masteries, the turn meter increase, uh, generation increase from oppressor mastery, and then he's going to be getting the turn meter boost from Inquisitor Shamil as well. That's a lot of turn meter throughout the duration of a long battle. So another thing, that, as we jump in here, guys, another thing I really like about Theodore the Savant, right, is that he has a uh, very fast animations on this champion. He's not like Ultimate Death Knight or like Morag Bronze Lock. I like those champions, don't get me wrong. But they, they take the longest path possible to get to the mob, don't they, guys? Like Ultimate Death Knight, he is running everywhere but where the enemy is. Same thing with like Morag. She hops her way over to the enemy, takes her time. Uh, with Theodore, he's like, nah, man, I'm the king of speed. I know who I am. I know what I bring to the table. I'm just going to go fast and often. And his animations back that up. Check it out, man. Boom. That's it. That's it. Barely anything. He just moves his staff or whatever he has and boom, all the enemies are attacked. So getting a little bit of bad RNG here early on with our provokes, but uh, still, what I want to do, I want to give him a chance to have another turn or two here, is all I'm looking for. I want to see if he can get an extra turn proc or, 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 or two. So he places his poisons, his poison sensitivity, obviously doing more damage from the poisons. He's already up for another turn, just a moment here. He's getting those turn meter boosts from, from Inquisitor. You guys see it right there. Boost turn meter, boost turn meter all over the place, man. That's pretty insane. Very important. It can make, I can't overstate this enough, guys, how much of a massive difference having your DPS in the main slot when you're running Inquisitor Shamil on the same team to get all those turn meter boosts throughout the duration of the battle. It's a lot, man. It's a lot. Uh, but anyway, he's not getting the back-to-back. -back. He's not getting any Relentless procs right. Oh, he did. He finally got one. There we go. Uh, and he's obviously the increased speed champion for this team, too. So it's a lot of utility out of one champion on the team. Let's go ahead and let, give him one more turn, and then we're going to go ahead and get to the lower here, right? But th this is my favorite build on... Uh, on Theodore for longer battles in the in the good old uh, and you guys can see uh, what a what a great champion if he was in if he had brimstone he'd be better there all right so let's end the battle just take a quick look see at what he was able to do again very anecdotal 17 turns here but he put out a million damage not too much shy of Cupidus but look at Venus she's like stand aside everybody. Wow, that's a lot of damage from Venus, huh, guys? But Theodore is he's just a great champion. Great champion. Easy to keep alive, which is the best thing, too, in, uh, in Clan Boss. So let me free regroup this, and let's go ahead and pull up his lore here, guys. So recently used first, Theodore the Savant. This is the first time that I've read it right in here. I can't highlight it, though. I liked highlighting it. What about you guys? The three of you who cared when I read lore. <laughs> Even from a young age, Theodore was most charitably described by others as different. With an intellect matched only by his obsessive behavior, the child attended one of the most prestigious universities in Anhalt, but in his first of a number of sad and ironic twists, was expelled due to his fixated behavior. You see, Theodore was initially enrolled to study medicine, but refused to only attend the lectures he was assigned. He sat in on classes of alchemy, astronomy, and natural world, and the arcane arts. He wrote essays on subjects he was not enrolled in, undertook projects for the academic staff that had not been requested of him, and continuously pestered everyone from his tutors to the institution's librarians about an endless array of topics and theories. It was not too long before he was refusing to sit particular tests uh, or ignoring assignments because he believed they were beneath him or unnecessary for one of his obvious abilities. It became too much for the university to control, so with regret, the ruling council of scholars had Theodore banished. Such an act in his formative years was devastating for Theodore's psyche and lay at the root of the horror that was to come. 
Embittered and enraged, Theodore forswore the university and academic institutions in general. He embarked on a quest to become the perfect scholar, one uh, that all other so-called men and women of learning would look to in envy and awe. While his interests spanned an incredibly broad range of topics, it was in biological matters that he eventually found his greatest passion. He trained as a physician, but considered the desire to only heal the body to be short-sighted. He wished also to delve into the mechanics of the soul itself, to cut to the core of the nature of existence. Considering nothing to be off-limits for his superior intellect, he soon strayed into the study of necromancy. It was around this time that he first came across the concept of soul gems and, via it, the cult of Kaleth. Theodore sought out a soul shepherd of Knight's Revenant named Matrix, and also asked him to take him on as his apprentice. Matrix initially refused until Theodore conducted a perfect soul transmission on two cultists, right there in front of him. Shocked at Theodore's potent mixture of intellect and natural ability, Matrix reconsidered. It wasn't long before Theodore was inducted as a soul shepherd, securing at the time his own mortality. One of Theodore's first acts as a Knight Revenant was to return to the university that expelled him. On the dark and terrible night, Theodore stalked the corridors of the revered institution accompanied by a pack of whooping Kaleth cultists who, on his orders, kidnapped each and every single academic they could lay their hands on, while leaving the shocked students untouched. The terrified scholars were taken and continued to be to what would become Theodore's secret laboratory, which he had established since fleeing the academy on the outskirts of Nabuk. There, they were kept in, kept in like cattle as the deranged Knight Revenant's plans for them slowly became apparent. Now, while most Knight's Revenant choose to have their souls transferred to bodies that are young, strong, and healthy, Theodore de derives twisted delight from claiming the bodies of those academics who once rejected him. Nor does he show restraint when it comes to using said bodies as part of his own eternally ongoing research. Constantly seeking to break the bonds of the scientific and the arcane, his happily ex experiments on his he happily experiments on his own stolen flesh and blood, knowing that no matter what happens to his physical form, his soul is safe with another unwilling host waiting. Quite what he intends to do uh, once the last of the despairing scholars is used up remains unclear. Theodore is now known as a savant amongst his fellow Knight Revenant, and is viewed by most as a dangerous madman. His brilliance is undeniable, however, and he continues to perform the role of the sole shepherd to the cult. Down the years, he has found the battlefield to be a fascinating trial ground for his experiments, especially regarding phys physiology, the impact of deadly arcane magics, the surround, the surrendering of bodies from the souls that inhabit them, and the development of poisons and toxins. The latter most he views as something akin to a hobby, and his laboratory is full of dire brews and bubbling, stinking cauldrons. For all of those reasons, Theodore will happily pack his veils, lift his staff, and accompany his fellow adherents of Kaleth into a maelstrom of combat, where he puts the last body he has stolen from those he has once rejected him to good use, annihilating the foes of the cult and in indulging his own warped curiosity at the same time. Wow, what a freaking story. And there you have it, guys. Though That is the lore of Theodore the Savant, and those are the two best builds that I would recommend implementing for him on your accounts. Congratulations if you have this amazing champion. Thank you for watching, and as always, take care, guys.